Hello, everyone. Thank you again for joining us at the 2022 Sloan Sports Analytics Conference Competitive Advantage Talks presented by Kager, also known as the Craft Analytics Group. My name is Mike Duke, and I'm a first-year MBA student at MIT Sloan. It is my pleasure to introduce our next presentation, Different Balls, Same Goals, presented by StatsBomb. Uh, please join me in welcoming to the stage our speaker, Ted Knudsen, CEO and co-founder of StatsBomb. Thank you. <laughs> all right, so you people probably know me from soccer or not at all. Both of those are fine. Uh, let's see if we can get this caught up. I'm going to wander a bit probably because this is a little bit small and I'm old, so my eyesight's not as good, but we'll see. OK, so who are StatsBomb? Uh, we are a soccer, well, we started as a soccer blog, and now we are the world's best soccer data company. Uh, <sighs> We started on a platform using somebody else's data. We produced visualizations and analysis tools, uh, but then we realized that we could do it better uh, than, than the companies that we were working with, and so we created our own data to a market-leading spec in 2018. Since that time, over 100 teams now use StatsBomb data and IQ globally, including the majority of the Premier League and something like 21 MLS teams. I'm here to tell you that data is competitive advantage. There's a, it's not an apocryphal story because I've actually got it from the horse's mouth itself, uh, but I know that one of the NBA teams had a collection group that in 2008, they were collecting the center body mass every half second in every NBA game in order to create tracking data before it was available across the league. That's competitive advantage. That's what those teams that are really desperate to find an edge can do. That's what we're talking about. So, <clears throat> soccer a few years ago, relatively naive, Widespread use of proxies, uh, especially around defending, which means that you have a lot of guesswork. In soccer, recruitment is a massive thing. You can turn over technically your whole squad every single year if you were able to sell all of them and buy new sets uh, of players. However, we got a lot of pushback from coaches that the data wasn't good enough. It didn't have these things inside of it. And I worked inside of two football clubs or two soccer clubs uh, <laughs> back in the day. And you're sort of put in a spot where like, you could disagree with them because the analysis is still better than them looking through every single match across the whole world to find good players. But if you are able to take that a step further, you say, okay, what can we create that sort of clears up your objections? So that's what we did. We created new data that had never been seen before. And we created visualizations that make pulling out insight easy and faster to do. <clears throat> so Soccer Now has pressure data, freeze frames, pass footedness, shot impact height, combine them, for real analysis and less guesswork. And that's not without, sorry, that's without mentioning all of the increased um, and upgrades that we've put in the expected goals models, which is sort of the basic currency of soccer analytics. Right, so what we wanted to do here was approach this new sport of football uh, and, and be able to build new data as a source of competitive advantage in evaluating talent, especially around skill sets, player skill sets. Uh, analyzing opponents and making predictions. And making predictions at the team level, but also at the gambling level, which those of you who know my background know that I spent an awful long time in the world of sports betting. So <clears throat> our experience as a soccer data company helped us get a, a head start here. Football has stuff that's easy to translate from soccer, like we built a hybrid data spec, freeze frames are, are something that was natural for us to, to port from one sport to the other, pass charts, pass location, player comparison radars, distributions, et cetera but it also has some very difficult things. And, and one of the, the fascinating things about football itself is how much uh, collision and occlusion there is, which if you're, if you're trying to do that strictly from a tracking data perspective, it's really difficult to keep the humans out of it. Uh, so we embedded with football experts to learn more about formations, routes, line battles, terminology, a whole bunch of phrases around schemes that I still have no idea what they mean, but I was there in the room and I, I, I nodded as if I had some sort of clue. Uh, for those of you who've been in that situation, good luck to you. <clears throat> so our experience is a competitive advantage and we believe that advantage will come from providing the most detailed objective information about what players are doing on the field. We don't know what their job was. We're not going to pretend that that was what their job was. What we're going to do is we're going to provide objective info of the outputs that occurred on the field over and over again. And we're building a high-tech hybrid data spec. 
The reason why it's hybrid is because this is a tough sport to approach strictly from an automated perspective. If anybody tells you that they can build an automated, high quality eventing and tracking system together at the same time and produce awesome data, right now it's probably still snake oil, especially in this sport. You need humans to clarify a lot of the difficult edge cases around what is a difficult edge case sport as part of the glory of it. So that's what we did. To add a specific experience, we did a deep dive. And there, there's a phrase in sort of the startup world that says, do things that don't scale. Like the really important things you need to learn in order to build expertise, like you might have to get your hands dirty. So I moved my country, or my family across the country, across the world in fact, to immerse myself in the sport. And I owe a huge debt of thanks to Coach Manny Diaz and his whole staff. They were unbelievably kind, and I learned so much. They were so generous with their time and their learning. So, I spent months learning about the issues that teams care about, watching some of these analysts and coaches sleep under their beds, or under their desks, you know? <laughs> like during training camp, 16 hour, 18 hour days sometimes, completely overwhelming. I'm there and I was just like, oh my God, this is, I, I can't believe that this is how it happens, but that's how you produce a team, and that's the amount of work that goes into it at the staff level. So we needed to learn that type of information. <laughs> right, so what have we done? Uh, I'm going to walk through some of the, the interesting elements that we've put into our new data and, and sort of explain why we have done this. Some of these things were re relatively straightforward from soccer. Uh, so what we do is we track the ball and we track the XY of all the events around the ball. So you've got pre-snap motion here, you've got the snap to somebody, uh, we know where that happened, uh, we know <clears throat> this was pressured. Uh, there was a, a hurry and a, and a pressure be, behind it. The pass happened, and there was a catch. Potentially, you know, there might have been a missed tackle. We're collecting all of that information in stream where it happened, and we can put it, piece it back together in, in sort of the event data frame. And we do it at the college level, and we also do it at the NFL level. And we do it all off of video. There are no chips. It's very useful to have chips. I, I don't disagree with that. But from the perspective of scale, that's not something that you can do right now, especially if one team has chips, the other team doesn't. Does the ball have a chip in it? All of these things are very complicated. We've taken out the complexity, and we've done it strictly from video. We're doing it NFL, FBS this year. In future years, we'll do it further down the college frame. And at some point, we hope to democratize the data across the whole of football in the United States. Freeze frames are another natural thing for StatsBomb. We built them in, in soccer to be able to produce better expected goals models, uh, knowing the context of what happens around every single event that you care about is actually crucial because it's a very contextual game in soccer. In football, it's even more. And we'll, we'll talk about some of the elements of context that we've built into the, the product and the platform in a minute. But these freeze frames actually are really cool. We have them at, at pre-snap, at snap, so we know where everybody and who they are at every snap. Uh, we've got it at the mesh point, at the throw, and at catch or interception. On running plays, we have it when the running back reaches the line of scrimmage. We're getting things like separation for wide receivers at the point of the pass, and also at the point that it hits his hands. And we try to collect that in what we call a frame precise way. So we want to be able to, to look at that and have effectively 1 25th of a second of a timestamp, if that's the quality of the video that we're getting. If you do that, you get some really fascinating info that we'll talk about in a second. All right more elements that we've tried to build into this. So we have snap formations at every snap. We prefer to collect from all 22 because that gives us better orientation from behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, but we can do it off of broadcast video as well. And what we've done here is we can tell you the distance of all the players from the line of scrimmage, which is really interesting if you're looking for different schemes that you're facing. Uh, we can also tell you the compactness and where everyone's at on the offensive side of the ball, which is something that came up in, in recent weeks talking about different schemes and how you approach the, the defending of these. We also have line battles, which I think is, is a huge element that is probably one of the difficult, most difficult areas to evaluate players inside of the game. Again, we don't care what somebody's job was because we don't have any expertise around that. But what we're doing is we're going to collect who blocks who, when, for every play. The engagements, what happened, did they push them forward, especially in the running game? Did they push them back? Did they have to double team constantly on certain players? Like That's gonna be inside of the data. And that is the, the one last area that we had to start from scratch because soccer doesn't have anything like that. <laughs> like, there's, there's no giant 300 pound men pushing each other in soccer. Um, there are no giant 300 pound men, except for maybe I can fend one. But those of you who 
For those of you who know what that is, like, that's a deep cut. So, Yeah, so, so line battles is, is huge for us, and we hope that it completely changes how analysts and, and talent scouts evaluate players. We, there's a, that's wrong. That one should be route patterns. So we have route patterns there. That got copied over uh, incorrectly, but we have the synced route patterns for every play. We can tell you eventually, you can use machine learning and AI on this to then to start to parse what the schemes were, what the plans were on each passing play based off of the routes that were run. That doesn't always mean, especially at the college level, the players ran the correct route, <laughs> which is one of the, the hard parts of pulling this back out. And we know this because we were with the coaches and the coaches told us, no, that wasn't this play, that was this play, but they got confused. Um, maybe that doesn't happen at Alabama very often, but as you go down the chain, I'm sure that that's regular. So we have synchronized route patterns that you'll be able to see where all the wide receivers were at, at any particular point. Now, those of you who are really interested in this, you can check this out. We've got our IQ MVP at our table right now. This isn't pie in the sky. This isn't design. This is we have the data and we have the IQ MVP there for you to play with. Well, at least be demoed. All right, so we've also added pass placement. We collect where on the receiver's body the ball came. Now, when you combine that with the route pattern vectors, you open up an entirely new spectrum of being able to evaluate quarterback accuracy. On these particular types of routes, is our quarterback throwing it behind players or too high? Um, this is one of the, we also did a lot of research around this on how to build the tooling to be able to collect this data. So we have humans that, that collect this data in particular. And we, we went on YouTube and we looked at, all right, show us the most insane catches in football from the last five years. And this was one of them. And as you can see, that's probably about, about eight feet out there, and we had to put that into the collection. So this is, this is the type of detail that we're hoping to recreate so that people who work in the sport can use it to evaluate players, to evaluate other teams, and this is the, the care that we've taken in building this data spec. You can also look at the pass placement elements um, and simply look at completion, uh, complete or incomplete. So you might be able to pick up new info about where incompletions are likely to happen. You pick up info on does this quarterback throw behind players uh, to the right versus the left, which has sometimes been a problem. You might even be able to pick up information, especially on running, or, uh, running backs and receivers, on like where their cold spots are. They have a really hard time catching the ball in these spots. Now, these are game collections, so you end up with sort of a small sample, but eventually, if you took that into practice, we're talking about practice, then that would be something that might be particularly interesting in the player development space, which is another thing that everybody really cares about. So yeah, we've got the ball distance on receiver center mass. We've also got some visualizations that allow you to be able to uh, color grade on the distance of the pass. Is it more likely to be sort of random where the ball hits the receiver uh, on longer throws versus otherwise? Since it's stats bomb, and I don't think Luke Bourne is in here, but if he is, hi Luke. Uh, radars are, are in our product. Now we offer distributions for those of you who hate radars. So you know we're, we're here for everybody. It's not just the haters. Um, but we use radars and we've seen this like just ripple across the world of soccer. People love these things. Coaches love these things. And getting buy-in on stats and data usage with coaches is incredibly important if that's your job. So we provide them because we have experience now. Something like eight years of experience in the soccer space that coaches like this, it's easier to engage with them if you give them profiles. Also, it's fast to use these things to look at player skill sets. So these are three different types of receivers. Will Mallory's a tight end. Uh, Harley is, is a wide receiver. Charleston Rambo is probably gonna be drafted this year. <clears throat> also a wide receiver. You can customize all of the spokes around this to be able to look at different types of KPIs that you care about, metrics that you care about in your scheme. And then it's, uh, it's based off of the whole population of receivers, like what do they look like on these particular KPIs, you spit it back out, and it's just a quick reference to say, hey, what does this dude do well, and what does he not do? Now, you can do that with stats and data, that's totally fine, but if you show coaches tables of stuff, they kind of switch off, they like start looking at their phone, like that's not a space that you really wanna be in. You wanna keep it sweet, you wanna keep it fast, keep them engaged, so we provide visualizations that help them do that. So we've built the tools, and <clears throat> Our goals with IQ Football, which is our, our front-end product, is that we wanted to start to give insight to help teams win more games. 
Uh, you're gonna get more info for cutups on your video platforms. Like if you looked at the snap formations on, on some of this stuff, you'll see that we've got bunches and stacks that are easy to pull out, really simple categorization on the machine learning side. That's gonna be true across like all sorts of stuff. I won't even pretend that I know what's gonna happen with this data when we get into the hands of really smart people like Derek Yam at the Raven sitting up front here. Formerly a stats bomb data scientist. Feels great to see him back, you know, working in the NFL. But uh, yeah, we have no idea. Uh, part of building the data is to try and replicate what happens in the game as accurately as possible, because that's a competitive advantage, but I'm not gonna pretend that I am the, the elite expert of how this stuff is gonna be used in the future, because I don't know the game well enough. And these incredibly smart people right now, they're gonna have awesome ideas over the next five years that we think will change how the game is coached and analyzed. We've seen it in other sports. When you take great data and you apply it to a sporting model, like you see basketball change, you see baseball change. For those of you who are baseball fans, I apologize, I wasn't involved in that, that's not our fault. <laughs> but you might see football change in elite ways, and one of the fun parts about this sport in particular is that every time that there's a change, there's an adjustment. So like, it'll be really interesting to see what happens over the next five to 10 years. We also build tools to reduce the grind. I wasn't kidding when I was talking about people sleeping underneath their desks because they weren't getting enough sleep at night because that was the workload that they have to do at the college level, at the pro level. These, these coaches work unbelievably hard. So if we can save them a little bit of time and allow them to work smarter by giving them better tools that allow them to go faster and building the insights, that is our goal. For the coaches, maybe if we, if we were in a room with them, we'd say, hey coach, if we do our jobs right, you guys are all gonna get an extra round of golf every single week. And I think that that's part of the elite selling package that we're gonna to put together. Finally, we know this from soccer, if we get things right, the analysts will feel like they have superpowers. And that's, that's not a quote from me, that's a quote from somebody that I hugely respect that used to work for Arsenal and then changed jobs and she lost like, her access to the data and she's like, look, I feel like I lost my superpowers. If we get it right, the analysts feel like they have new insight and they never wanna go backwards. That was our goal with this product. So, contextual filters, this is the hardest thing that we had to wrap our heads around. This is another competitive advantage that, that I think has, has been missing from the space. Like, the whole game is context. Like, what personnel are on the field? What down and distance is it? What time is it? Like, who is actually on the field? Where are they lined up? We have tried to build a package of filters that addresses as much as possible. <laughs> and, and I will say that we are not there yet because the game is so complicated, when we start to put it in the hands of coaches, they'll be like, hey, can you do that? Hey, can you do that? And we listen to them because we care. We've got play-by-play -play feed, powerful visualization. Uh, some of the coaches said they'd love to see the dots because that immediately meant that they could review what happened on a drive-by-drive, play-by-play basis. Um, so, you know, they're not quite dots, we use shapes as opposed to dots, but still, even quite useful there. We've got passing charts, which I said was really straightforward. If we do our job right on the collection, the, the sort of like 1 25th of a second, uh, if we do it from the moment the throw to the moment the catch happens, and we know where each player was standing, we can tell you how long that ball took to get there, which means that we can start to give you some velocity numbers uh, without having chips in the balls. That, I think, is pretty interesting. Uh, is a, an old Mike Leach uh, element. Is a, you don't know how far the actual out route is because you don't know where the quarterback was standing. Like, hopefully we'll know all that and we'll know how far or how hard that boy threw the out route. These are really fun. So these are like the spray charts. <clears throat> and then we go to heat maps. And on the left is Brennan Armstrong of Virginia, left-handed quarterback, really interesting scheme. On the right is Tyler Van Dyke uh, of Miami Hurricanes. Both of these guys, if they stay healthy, potentially gonna be interesting draft picks, and you get to see kinda where their hot spots are. Uh, I think that this is, is interesting, and again, just scratches the surface on what's gonna be done on this in future years. We know snap alignments, so when everybody lines up on the field, like, we collect that, and then we put that into heat maps of where the ball is at based on hashes. Uh, less relevant in the NFL because tighter hashes, but in the college game, like, you know, they care about which hash it is, and it starts to, to um, change what plays you would call based on that scheme. So we will have receiver or, you know, defensive player, line-by-line -line information. And what was kind of cool when we were digging through the data was we looked at, at a couple of tight ends, and they would only line up wide, when it was a passing situation. And then tight formations, more 50-50. So you're getting interesting tendencies and tells out of the data simply by knowing who was lined up where. So we built StatsBomb by listening to customers. And 
Any of you in here that work in the football space, I wanna, or anybody out there that's seeing this on YouTube, like we want you to challenge us to make your life easier and answer your most difficult questions. We're not pretending that we know everything about this sport. We know the tiniest bit about this sport, and it is so fascinating. And I love this sport. I used to, I used to gamble on this sport professionally, which is one reason why it was, it was a lot of fun to be able to come back and, and do this product after years of soccer. Uh, someone a month or two, well, a month or two into this project told me that I was the reverse Ted Lasso. So uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's my unfortunate curse to bear. Right, so our takeaways. We have watched the transformation in soccer. We have seen how that sport has changed. American coaches are not afraid of data. They are not afraid of visualizations. They want better information. They want insight they can understand. That is, that is the factual case. Like the, the noise that you get on Twitter is not it. And, and soccer's gone. Like that's, that's answered. This sport is gone too. You've seen it on fourth downs. You've seen it on, on the aggressive play calling that happens more often. Like this sport is using this information and it is never going back. In fact, it's gonna go forward. The data that we've produced, we hope, is not just an upgrade. This is an evolutionary moment. It's got tracking built inside of it. It's got freeze frames and contextual information and it's gonna have great tools. So get the right information into the right hands, make the insight easy to surface, great data and the best tools you yield unique insights that lead to more wins. That's what we're hoping for, that's what we've built, that's what we've suffered for for like the last 18 months and that's the end of my talk. Thank you very much. We now have a few minutes for Q&A, if anyone has any questions for Ted. No hecklers, please. <clears throat> hey there. Um, quick question for you. So what's, what's the level of availability for this data for competitors? So if I'm scouting another team, do I have access to any of this data on, on that team? Absolutely, like our, our intent is to sell it by competition wide. So if you're an NFL team, you buy the season of NFL data. And if you're a college team, you would buy the whole space of college for, for that period. Sure, okay, thank you. Hi, thank you for the presentation. Um, have you looked into like, trying to like categorize defensive formations, especially in like the secondary, like whether it's cover two, cover three, that just seems really complicated with the data. It is, and, and actually like one of the, the insights when we were designing this was listening to the coaches feed for the national championship. And in, in the coaches room uh, a couple of years ago, they had three elite coaches that were arguing about what the actual coverage call was on that. And then Saban comes back later and he's like, yeah, we actually blew that play. And so it's, it's an impossible task, but what you can start to do and what, what Brian Brooks crew at ESPN have done is like start to use machine learning and AI to categorize stuff as well as you can. Uh, now we can clearly tell you like this is press coverage because we know that the, the, the cornerbacks are like right up on, on the players. We can tell you that it's, it's currently one high. Difficulty there is like, you know, can we tell you it's cover three? Can we tell you like there's more cover two these days? We're working on it and I think that at some point we'll be able to, to sort of have enough tracking inside of all of our product suite to be able to categorize that as correctly as we can. It doesn't mean, again, that we'll always get it right because blown, blown coverages happen and it looks wrong and weird. And, but one of the other fun things that we did, <clears throat> and sorry, this is a segue, I apologize for the next question that I'm gonna ruin, but we, we were inside of a team that did not use the same terminology on offense and defense for the exact same things. <laughs> which, which is like the absurdity of football, right? If you have different coaching trees that you've grown out of, you have different concept calls, you've got different play calls, like, and that is not consistent from the offense to the defense, which is like really, really hard to figure out. So what we wanted to do and what we, what we started to do is take the Madden playbook as like the baseline, because everybody knows Madden. That's like, everybody has some idea of what looks like in the Madden playbook, and so we'll take that as the baseline for all of the play potential concepts that we've got. And then we're gonna use sort of AI machine learning to then branch that out. And then you can call those plays what you want in your own mapping table of definitions. And then if you go to your next team, you'll be able to then go back and say, okay, I had these predefined. Now I wanna replicate that so I don't have to do all that work again. So let me just copy that over. Um, it's, a, it's a difficult problem to solve. I'm not sure that we will get it perfect, but 
we're trying to be as thoughtful about everything that we provide to people so that it's, it's as, as painless as we can make it. I think we have time for one more question. Yeah, you talked about working with coaches and maybe a little bit of athletes too. I was wondering if you had any advice or what problems you ran into uh, communicating data science insights and statistical insights with people without much statistical background. Use visualizations. Like conclusively in soccer, use as much visualization as possible, but it's gotta be clean. It's gotta have like the right information in it. It needs to, to not be ugly. <laughs> and, and you know, people can critique our stuff as, as you know, ugly or not, but like, if you have something that's visually attractive, like, it is easier to get across that. Um, you know, sometimes you just wanna give them a couple bullet points too. Like, keep it simple. But that's gonna change a lot over the coming years. And, and the nice part about like, American football coaches is they're smart. Like, they're, they're really smart. They're not just ex-players who you know, have, have grown up in the system and then they, they happen to get a job because like, that's how European soccer works. Like, almost exclusively, these are like strongly merit-based roles. Awesome, thanks. Uh, thank you, Ted. Thank you.